Hello everyone, Reza here with another how-to videos. In this video, I will show you how to remove an individual particle from your end particle simulation. Starting with the scene, I have a very simple scene, ground floor and this ball, and both are passive colliders. I have end particle system with only three particles and the emission will stop after 50 frames. Now let's talk about why this can be a tricky process. Simply because if I produce this particle object, I'm not dealing with individual particles, but rather one node in my adliner representing the rate of my particle, which is three at the moment. But what if the director or the producer comes and says, well, it looks good, but I do not like this green one. Can you get rid of it? The problem is you cannot get inside this end particle one to have access to individual particles. You may say, Reza, what, a, what about right clicking and go to particle? And now you can select individual particles. That's fantastic, but how can you delete it? Because if, because if I press delete, I won't be able to delete any of them. And that's the idea behind this video. It's worth mentioning that if you've already cached or n-cached your simulation, you have to go in here and delete your cache because you don't need the baked information. You need live information in order to tweak individual components. Now let's go with the hypothetical scenario where the producer absolutely dislikes this green ball for whatever reason, how we can delete it. Now the way we approach this is through lifespan attribute. We need to find the lifespan for this particular particle and set that lifespan to zero. Now let's see how we can do that. First things first, where to find lifespan? Now you need to select your particle or N particle, press control A to go to the attribute editor. It's in the N particle shape node. I can scroll up and lifespan is one of the tabs. Right now it's set to live forever. And in various videos, we talked about different types. We talked about constant, we did talk about random range, which randomizes the emission. The one that we didn't talk about in the previous videos or haven't had a chance to explore is lifespan PP per particle only. And that's what we need to choose to have access to individual particles. Once that's set, it's time to right click, go to particle, select the particle that we want and go to Windows, General Editor, and bring the good old Component Editor. If you've been watching my tutorials, you know that I use Component Editor almost all the time in rigging. Who would have thought we can use that in FX videos? So if you look at the top tabs, we've got one for particle. Even if I click on it, we now have access to the selected, the ID number of the selected particles. The reason this is important because you may not have three, you may have 5,000 and you want to get rid of 20. So you need to know what are you selecting and based on that, you get the ID in the left-hand side. Now, what, right, what we have right now is particle zero, which is the first particle that gets emitted, poor guy. Now I'm going to scroll until I have access to lifespan per particle, that one right here. And I'm just going to zero out its value and close and go one frame forward. Look at that. This green particle is gone, but we're not there yet. There's one more step you need to take. You need to right click and go to object mode and with effects in the menu set selected, go to fields and solver initial state 
and set for selected. Now, if I play, you won't be able to see the green ball anymore. And it's been removed from your simulation. Now you can simply recache your simulation and continue with your work. I hope you found this video useful and see you in the next one.